let's talk about setting up your plugins rack. It's a good idea if you go ahead and organize things before you get started, or else things can get pretty messy and pretty confusing when you're trying to find a plugin. So it might be a good idea to organize it into groups. We have drums, guitars and keys, vocals, and miscellaneous. Once you've decided what your groups will be, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and assign the plugin slots to channels. That way, when you want to assign a plugin to a channel, there's already a space for it in the rack. So we might assign these first couple of slots to the kick drum. Now you'll notice that you see a one, a two, and a three in the upper right hand corner of each plugin slot. This is the order that the audio will flow through the plugins. So you need to remember this when you're inserting plugins because the audio will flow in this order. Now, when you're ready to insert an actual plugin, you'll need to make sure your console is in config mode. And now you have a drop down arrow here. If you click on this arrow, you'll see all the available plugins. You'll notice that it only gives me the option of mono because this is a mono channel that I have selected. If you have a stereo channel, it'll let you insert a stereo plugin. So now you just choose your plugin, and the plugin is inserted. Now, if you want to see the plugin, the easiest thing to do is hit the plugins button on your console again, and it changes the view modes, and then click the plugin, and you can see your plugin. Once you're looking at the plugin, you'll see at the top, you have your input, which is your kick, and your output, which is insert one of the kick channel. You have your key source, which defaults to none, which just means that the plugin is listening to the channel that it's inserted on. If you want to change your key source for a compressor or a gate, this is where you would do it. You can click here and choose any input or effects return uh, as your key. You also have your source pickoff, so that if you select a source, you can choose pre-fader, uh, pre-insert, or top of the channel. Uh, you'll notice up here you have snapshots, and this tells you if this plugin is in any snapshots, and it also lets you add the plugin to a snapshot here. You can also do this with a little S button to the bottom right of the plugin. Up here you see a little pen button. What the pen button does is pens this plugin up so that when you change your selected channel, this plugin is always in the view mode. So this might be good if you have uh, a delay processor or something like that, that during a live show, you always want it to be there when you go to your plugins page, no matter what channel you have selected. Then you also have the view button here, and this changes from seeing your whole plugin rack to just seeing one plugin at a time. You can also change this view mode again by hitting the plugins button on the console. Now you'll notice to the left of the plugin, you have two green buttons. The top one makes the plugin inactive. This means that it is not using DSP at all. You cannot turn the plugin on if it's inactive. This saves DSP, but it may also break audio if you turn this on or off. So therefore, you cannot do this while you're in show mode. The bottom button is a bypass mode. This does not take the plugin out of DSP. You're still using processing, but you can do this during a show and not worry about losing audio. Inserting a reverb plugin on the venue can be a little tricky if you want the reverb to be fed from an aux, but then return to an effects return. Instead of assigning a plugin slot to that effects return, the first thing you'll do is actually put the plugin in the rack. So we'll choose an empty slot, and then we'll assign the plugin. If you want your plugin to be fed from a mono aux but return to a stereo channel, you'll need to go down to the other and then select your reverb. We might want a one in, two out. This would be a mono aux feeding it, and then it's going to a stereo effects return. So we'll select that plugin. Once it's there, change our view mode. You can see the plugin. And on the top, we'll assign our input. We'll choose an aux, we'll say vocal verb one. And now we choose our output. So we'll go to an empty effects return and we'll go to effects return six. So now this reverb is being fed by vocal verb one, which is aux one, and it's returning to effects return six.